All right, YouTube, for this exercise, I'm going to need you to get a piece of paper and a pen. I have these everywhere. I lost it. What did I do with it? I have no idea where it is. Hold on. I guess I should have got it before I started the video. Here it is. So what I do is I find stuff, dates in the Bible, and then I start applying them to the timeline. And trust me, trust me when I say, I don't care when the first of the year is. It didn't matter to me. I just wanted to know when it was. And so I do these calculations nonstop. It's just, there's just hundreds and hundreds of pages of calculations of dates that I found in the Bible. So to get an idea of how my brain works, which I don't even know if anybody wants to see that, <laughs> I am going to go through a segment that I discovered two days ago. Um, it, it was prompted by something that uh, Glass Darkly Ministries had uh, said about 11.11. And so I said, well, let me go through, and, and we read in the Bible where it says, as in the days of Noah. Why is it that that was that important to know that in that day they would be eating and drinking and give it in marriage, and then boom, it'll happen. The reason it was important is because it is the one book, out of all the books that I've gone through with dates and everything else, it's the one book that has actually a lot of dates in it. Not only does it have dates, but it has date counts. It shows you how to do date counts. It shows you how to get from this date to that date. And it starts, has to start somewhere. No matter where it started, I didn't care. I just did this study. I didn't care where it started. But when I do the count, it lands on everyone else's days that they thought it was going to be. Um, piece of trumpets, it lands right on there. It lands on uh, so, so many things. I'm going to take you through this, and I'm going to show you. Now, what was the most important thing that happened 4,344 years ago, 1,656 years from creation. God wiped the earth clean of sin. He took eight souls with him. They were not sinless, but they believed. So, I'm going to pause right here for a second. Go grab a piece of paper. Grab a pen. If you're driving, don't do this now. Um, I really would like to see if we can go through these dates and see where they land. And again, I think it'll prove where we are right now and where we're going here. And literally not very, not like it could happen now. I'm not saying that it has to happen on any date that I see or any date that anybody else sees. It could happen at any moment. But this just jumped out of the Bible at me, and I was shocked, honestly. And you'll see why when we get to all of these dates and where they land and how they land. So, piece of paper and a pen. Do, do, do. Now, over there, you're on, it's on the other side. I know you're going that way, but go this way. It's over there underneath the, uh, the table over there. Pins up on the counter. I don't know what I'm doing. You guys have a pause button. You don't have to wait for me. Ah, rapture water. I have to drink a lot of water. Kidney stones require that you drink a lot of water. All right. Let's get into the pictures. Let's start up about right here. You would think... In our history, now, you, here in the United States, we're only, what are we, 250 years old, 260 years old, 200, what a bit, 254 years old, something like that. We're, we're not very old. But 
there's a lot of people that listen to this YouTube channel that would laugh at that because their culture is a thousand years old, 2000 years old. They've been in that country for forever, a millennia. They've been in there for a long time and they can trace their roots back to literally, you know, just the town that they're in. So when something huge like a flood happens and God tells us, as in the days of Noah, we are to look at that. In the Latin community, Dia de los Muertos. Yeah, in the Latin community, let me put my glasses on, I can't see. Oh, hey. In, uh, in the Latin community, they have a day called Dia de los Muertos. It happens on November the 1st. What does that mean? It's the Day of the Dead. When did everybody die at the flood? Well, I say the flood happened on October the 31st. We still celebrate that as a day of suspicion, a day of uh, darkness, right? But it's the day God brought, brought judgment upon the planet, and it is the day. No, I'm not saying October 31st is the rapture. Stop looking at the date for that. That's where we're starting. We're going to end up maybe finding the rapture, but this is where we're going to start. This culture, the Latin community, knows something catastrophic happened on October the 31st. As a matter of fact, when I did a search, I found out that most countries will look at October the 31st. Remember October the 31st, we go out at nightfall. At nightfall, it is, according to the Bible, the next day already. So at October the 31st, it's actually November the 1st. Every year on November the 1st, Christians in Switzerland honor All Saints. It's called All Saints Day. And they honor it on this day. They don't have a Halloween like we do, where we're like, oh, it's an evil day. It is if you're evil. It is a wonderful day if you're Noah and his three sons and his wife and their wives eight souls, and all of the animals that are on that ship, that was a wonderful day because they did not die on that day. So it's a very mixed emotion day, right? Same thing as going into the graves. They go into the graves, 15,000 died. That was a bad day for them, but the ones who didn't die came up out of the graves, right? So we have to look at both sides of the coin when you're looking at something. Um, too many people get all hung up on Halloween I don't. It's it's the day God flooded the planet. In Africa, we celebrate, they celebrate All Saints Day in Africa on November the 1st. This, every culture, again, America is young, but every other culture that's been around for thousands of years knows something happened on October the 31st and November the 1st. They know. It's in their history books. They've proven that the flood did occur because they found seashells on the top of the highest mountain. Can't figure out how they got up there. I know how they got up there. There was a worldwide flood. That's how they got up there. So, let's see. Feast of Hungry Ghosts. This is called the Feast of Hungry Ghosts. Who celebrates this one? Europe. Europe's original Halloween festivities were based on pagan festivals celebrating the dead, which are older than Christianity. They are saying... This, the concept of Halloween, is older than Christianity. Remember, Jesus came 2,000 years ago. The flood happened 4,344 years ago. It happened a long time ago. So this concept was around before anybody knew that Jesus would rise from the grave. You know, as a matter of fact, I mean, there were those that knew Jesus did come. Was the three wise men, three kings? They, they they knew he came. Herod even knew. He tried to kill all the children two years and under. He knew. Of course, Herod was not a uh, a believer. He was just trying to stop it from happening because he was playing the devil that that day when he did that. So here we are, and we have in Europe, beast of hungry ghosts. Where is this at? India. You know, India, it is it has a huge population, absolutely astounding population. They're, they have decided to, to observe October 31st as a happy day. The unifier of India, this person contributed to the unification of India in 565. Imagine how they chose that day, the 31st of October. 
Halloween, Halloween night on the eve of All Saints Day. This is celebrated, you can see down here in the USA, Europe, the Spanish-speaking countries, Japan, South Korea, New Zealand, the CIS countries, etc. So many countries recognize this date. Now, is that by accident? No. That's the day the flood happened. Would never say anything about it, bad about another watcher because we're all trying to figure this out. It just amazes me that as we're going through this, we're a month behind. We're a month ahead. We should wait four days until the moon does something and all this. Oh, Halloween. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely the day the flood started. So Halloween is a solid set date, but all these other dates float around. No. Halloween is the the set date of the flood, just as in the days of Noah. God was pointing us to when the flood began so that we could count and number our days from there. And I found, <laughs> I did this the other day, and I was sitting there scratching my head. I alluded to it on the last video, and that's, you know, because I, I knew something was going on here. I just had no idea that there were this many dates involved in the flood. And when I put them all down, see, I, I can read it, but until I put it on a graph or on a timeline, I don't understand what I'm seeing. Some people can read it and calculate it in their heads. I'm not that smart a guy. I got to write it down. And every single, and I mean every single date that I found in Noah's flood landed on an important day. And I'm going to show that to you. Uh, Dr. O, O-H-E, I went to the doctor. You knew about that the other day. I have a kidney stone that I am passing, and uh, I am not in pain. So he writes me prescriptions for antibiotics, antibiotics. Sorry, I learned that word in Spanish, so I say it in Spanish. Antibiotics, and um, something that helps me go to the bathroom more often, and then pain medication. All right? And then he says, I need you to go to the clinic so that they can take an x-ray. So I go. And then I need you to go to the, the other clinic so they can withdraw blood. So I go, and they take these x-rays. Um, and then I go over to the blood clinic. The lady's really nice. They take about a gallon of blood out of me, I think, or at least that's how it felt. And then now I'm waiting for the results of uh, what they found. So, But I'm talking to Dr. O because he's very inquisitive about this no moon theory that I have and why I believe it so much. And I'm telling him what I found out about all these dates, about how they land and about how if you don't do this exact count and you try to apply the moon to it somehow, it will change from year to year, every single time. What's crazy about it is that the dates are landing when you do it on this timeline, 364 days a year, it's a landing on very important days. Exactly. Perfectly. I'm still working on him. He'll come around. All right. Now, here's where your pen and paper comes in. Let's go through these days. And I'm going to show you on the timeline where everything is. Because I spent an inordinate amount of time calculating all this and where everything lands. And maybe, just maybe, I'm wrong, and you might figure something else out. All right, and it came to pass after seven days. What happened seven days prior to that? Remember, God told Noah, get ye up into the ark, sit at the door, and wait, for yet in seven days I will flood the earth. He goes inside that ark. Now, if we know the flood began on October the 31st, okay, Count seven days before that. It's that simple. October the 24th is the day Noah went into that ark and sat at that door. He was a watchman on the wall. He sat at that door and he waited with that door open for a week. And they mocked him the entire time. They did not come into that ark. God left that door open for them to come in. They wouldn't come in. In the 600th, God wants to make sure you understand it only took one year and 10 days for this flood to occur. Only, I say, I couldn't even imagine being on a boat for a year and 10 days. But Noah was 600 years old. In the second month, 
and the seventeenth day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the deep broken up. So here we are. On this day, God shuts the door. Boom. The door shut. It starts raining. And it rains. Here we have three dates. We have October the 24th. You can write that down. That is Heshvan. Let me see where it's at. Hold on. That is Heshvan 10. Seven days later, the flood began. That's October the 31st. Heshvan 17. Remember, any time you see a date, the, the calendar, our calendar, the Gregorian calendar, are off by 75 days, exactly 75 days. Every time you see a Hebrew date, always know that it's 15 days off, well, 75, but 15. So if it's the beginning of the month or the end of like October the 31st, for example, it will be the middle of the uh, Hebrew calendar. So October the 31st is Heshvan 17. That's when the deep broke up. And what does it say? It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. So we have three dates right there, clear. One week, we have the date of the flood, and we have 40 days. What happens 40 days after the flood? The flood ends. The flood ends on Kislev 27. Remember, the flood started on Heshvan 17. There are 30 days in the month. So Heshvan 17 would come up to Kislev 17, and then 10 more days would be Kislev 27. 40 days exactly. That's December the 10th. That is number three. Okay. Now, it's raining. It is raining 40 days and 40 nights. The water's coming up from, the, from below. It's coming down from on top. Water, just water coming from everywhere. And the ark is being lifted up into the air. It's lifted up so high by the 40th day. The rain stops. Remember, the, the, everything stops on the 40th day. It is calm. There is no rain. There is no water coming. He's not going any higher. He has reached his maximum height. Now, I said in the last video, 50 cubits. I couldn't see the word because I didn't have my glasses on. But it's 15 cubits. The, the, the ark was above the mountain. What mountain do you think he was above? Mount Ararat. How far above Mount Ararat was he? He was 15 cubits, which is about 23 feet. Or, if you're anywhere else on the planet, you use the metric system. And it's about 7 meters above Mount Ararat. All right? So he's 7 meters. Now, think about that for a second before I go into the next screen, before I get you to date number 4. He is literally 23 feet, 7 meters above Mount Ararat. Not far at all. As a matter of fact, think about this. The boat with all those animals and everybody on it and the massive size that it was, how many feet does the average boat go underwater? Stay, what part of it stays underwater? Maybe, what do you think, 20 feet, 15 feet? You know, do you think maybe 5 meters, 6 meters? There's not much space between the bottom of that boat and the top of Mount Ararat. So when he goes up, he doesn't come back down. He stays up there. He is floating above the highest mountain, above Mount Ararat. He's floating on the water above that. Okay. Date number four. And the waters prevailed upon the earth and 150 days. Okay. This is not, this is including the 40 days. It had prevailed upon the earth for 150 days. But prevailed meaning that it started on Halloween, October 31st, Heshbon 10. 150 days exactly from Heshbon 17, you will land on Nisan 14 on the cross. And I'm going to show you all this in the timeline, but I want you to write this all down so you have a reference. From Heshbon 17, you count 150, you can go into a time and date right now and put it in, you'll see what I'm talking about. 150 days, it would be after he finished rising up and he was at his maximum height and all the rain stopped, 110 more days from that point. But the Bible records 150 days inclusive, including those 40 days. There you have date number four. 
That is the cross. That's the day, 150 days that I'm going to show you here in a moment, Jesus on the cross. Jesus has given up the ghost. Jesus said, it is finished. It was a very high watch day for me because that's the day that Jesus finished. I have known for a long time that from the flood to Jesus on the cross, it's 150 days. What a lot of people got confused on was why there was a three-day difference between the boat being at its maximum height, 15 cubits or 23 feet or 7 meters above Mount Ararat, why was it, what's this other date for as to where it rested? Three days. Think about it. It only had to go down if he was, if he was 23 feet above and the a boat was 15 feet. He only had to drop eight foot. He didn't have to go down far at all to the bottom of that boat beginning to touch the top of that mountain. After the end of the 150 days, the waters were abated. They began, now remember this, they, he stayed up there. He rose up for 40 days. He stayed up there for 110 days, total of 150 days, and then the waters began to go away. When did they start to go away? The moment Jesus said, it is finished. And the ark rested in the seventh month and the 17th day. And when you go and you cross-reference what that was for Noah's, I remember there's six months different because in Exodus 12, God turned time back six months. It is actually Nisan 17. That is the seventh month for Noah. And the 17th day of this seventh month, a lot of people thought that was the same day. It's not. This is the day that Jesus rose. What happened on that day when Jesus rose? The bottom of that boat touched the top of that mountain, and that's when it settled down. All right, that's date number five that I just gave you. Let's go to date number six, okay? He just skips. He just skips on to a date. Tenth month, first day of the month. The tops of the mountains are seen. He's up there. He has settled down on Mount Ararat, and he's sitting up there, and now... On the 10th month and the first day, the tops of the mountains are seen. This is, this is number six. This is, uh, let's see here. Yeah, 70, how many days? It is 75 days, exactly 75 days after, let me see here, after uh, Jesus rises from the dead. You can put it in time and date. 75 days, exactly, after Jesus rises to Tammuz 1, the 10th month and first day for Noah, now he's seen the tops of other mountains out there because the water is going down. It rained 40 days, he went up, he stayed up there for 110, and then the waters began to go down. Boom, it took him a few feet to settle down on the top of Mount Ararat, and then the waters continually declined for 75 days, and now he can see the tops of the other mountains. Okay. From there, that's date number six. Okay. First day of the month, uh, the, the first day of the 10th month. That's number six. That is June 16th, by the way. I'll show you all that here in a moment. Because if you do a count, the sun goes up, it's a day. You have to give it a name. You just don't say, well, this day doesn't count. We have to wait for the moon to show up. No, it's a day. You have to assign a date to it. And to that day, we will assign June 16th. All right, next. Oh, yes, I know. I'm not trying to go to war with anybody who's looking at the moon. I love you and respect you. Uh, bottom line, Jesus Christ saves. And I'm just... I'm just trying to show you this timeline that nobody will listen to, but I'm going to keep going anyway. All right. You realize this means war. I love that Bugs Money thing. All right. Now, what date? It says, and it came to pass at the end of 40 days. So 40 days after Tammuz 1, which is June 16th, let's count here. Date number seven is going to land you where? Anybody? Anybody. The 9th of Av. It's going to land squarely on the 9th of Av, July 24th. This is a straight day count. Sun comes up, I assign a date. Then the sun comes up the next day, I assign a date. And I put it on a timeline. And Noah's Ark 
At the end of 40 days, what does he do? At the end of 40 days, on the ninth of Av, well, let's see, what did he do? Well, Noah opened the window. Now, remember this. Noah's been in this ark now for a long time. Let me see, how long has Noah been in this ark? He's been in this ark for nine months, just shy of nine months, seven days shy of nine months. Noah's been in this ark. Not only has he been in the ark, he's had the windows closed. Not only did he have the windows closed, he had a tarp over the top of the ark. He was sealed in. Nothing, he could see nothing outside the boat. Everything he saw was Jesus. He saw nothing but Jesus. He was in Jesus, protected by Jesus, while he was on that water. I believe that Noah represents a tribulation saint. Noah is saved, like everybody else that's saved. But he goes into tribulation. Okay. So, he opens a window. For the first time in almost nine months, for the first time, he opens a window of the ark, which he had made previously, and he set forth a raven, which went forth to and fro. That sounds like Satan going, where have you been, Satan? Well, you know, going back to and fro, here and there, up and down, whatever, you know, whatever I kind of want to. Same thing, raven went to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. He stayed out there. What does the waters represent? That, those are the Christians. Those are the true believers. Those are the bride. Those are the saints. There's only two groups going to heaven. The second group might have two raptures. I'm not sure, but there are only two groups going to heaven. Uh, three groups going to heaven. There's the bride, and then I've heard some really good teaching by Wayne over at We Are the Overcomers, proving he's got a video you should go watch. He's, he does a really good job. He does what I do. He goes through verse by verse and just shows you, and then how do you debate it? It's in the Bible. So he goes into there, and he uh, proves that there are, in fact, a bride and then two saint raptures. There's two separate ones. So I was like, okay, eh, it looks good to me. But anyway, what's happening as the waters are dried up? The waters are the word of God. The waters are us. We are the waters. And what's going to happen? It's going to dry up. Okay. So he, he sent forth the dove also on that day. What day? At the top in blue. 40 days after the 10th month and first day. 40 days exactly, bringing us to the 9th of Oz. He sets those out. Now again... I was not, and I didn't know this, I mean, I wrote it down before because I did a, a quick mathematical thing, but then I said, you know what, let me go through the story of Noah and let me find each and every date and put it on here as a number and circle it so I can show everybody. And I redid all the math because I have to make sure that I'm right, and boom, it lands on the 9th of August. You can't argue that. Now, seven is this date, seven. Seven is a very important number. The 9th of August, July 24th. And so he waits another week. Date number eight. Now remember, you are on the 9th of August, July 24th. The 40 days have ended. You've released a dove and a raven. And the dove comes back. And then seven days later, you release the dove again. And what happens? The dove comes back with an olive branch. The olive branch always represents Israel. This happens on Tubiav. The 15th of Av, July 30th, that's your, that you have the end of 40, which is the first month and 10th day. Then you have seven days after that. Then you have seven days after that to bring you to date number nine. The dove doesn't return. The dove does not return. And this is why, just as in the days of Noah, I'm looking very keenly at August the 6th, which is three days from now. Why? Because God directed us, for some reason, to look into Noah. He wanted us to find something in the, the Noah story. I know the Noah story very well and all of the events. And when I apply it, I didn't, know, I didn't really know how many dates were in here until I did this. But when I apply it, and, and he stayed yet another seven days and set forth a dove. Okay, yeah, that that's, uh, brings us to... Uh, Brings us to Av 22, which is August the 6th. It is time line or time or the date, the ninth date that I have found. The ninth date. What does the number nine represent? It, re it represents a completion. So, you got a list of chores. 
I showed you this last time. You got a list of chores. You got 10 things on here. You got to complete all 10. So each one you complete, you write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Number 10 is finished. You put a parenthesis around all of it. It's all finished. You circle it. It's all done. 10 means completed. Nine means a task or an item that you have to do. 10 means all of the tasks are completed together. So number nine, number nine of 22, August 6th. Now, I'm going to show you this, or I hope I remember to. Did you know that the dove flew away, didn't return? But a dove, in fact, did return to Jesus when he was being baptized by John the Baptist exactly nine days after that date right there. Nine days. Nine again. Nine again. I'm going to show you something here about 11-11. <laughs> That's why I'm here. I, I mean, I said I like a couple of videos ago, I don't want to make any more videos. But every time I find something super important, I feel like I have to bring it to you. All right. Let me, whoops. Let me go back up here. Next date. Let's go to the next date. So he's in the ark, right? He's the dove doesn't return. Okay. And hold on, let me see what this is. Did I mess up? Oh, there it is. Okay. I have so many different lines here for different things. So he's in the ark, and guess how many days it is from the day he releases the dove and the dove doesn't come back. Guess how many days exactly it is. To the first month and the first day, which is always Tishri 1, which is always September the 15th. It never changes. Always September the 15th. Remember when I said that if it's a Hebrew date and it's the first, it, Gregorian date will always be around the 15th, depending on which month has 31 days or 30 days, because our 30, 30, 31 does not match, because we actually have a month that has 28 days in it for some crazy reason. But... Um, 40 days to the very day you land on Rosh Hashanah. Guess what happens on this day? And it came to pass 600 and first year. Now Noah, we know Noah between this time that he got onto the ark on November the 10th and September the 15th, Noah had a birthday because now he's 601 years old. In the 600 and first year, he is 601 years old and the first month and the first day according to Noah now, is Tishri 1. September the 15th, the waters were dried over from the earth. Noah removed the covering of the ark. This is a big deal. This is a huge deal. This is the day that Patrick over at Hourly Watch has found a comet child named Child that is exactly coming out of the womb, just like Jupiter did six years ago on September the 23rd. He is finding this event happening Exactly, and I showed you in the last video what he found, exactly at sometime between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. on September the 15th. Exactly. 40 days after the dove doesn't return. Does the dove, does number nine, the completion of this segment, represent the bride going to heaven? 40 days later, does that Feast of Trumpets, the day Noah removes the covering? Noah removes the covering. All right, he takes the covering off. Does that represent the saints being gathered? Uh, remember, First Thessalonians is the rapture. Second Thessalonians is a gathering. They will not see their gathering, like just like it says in Second Thessalonians. They will not see their gathering until they see this huge falling away. Imagine every true Christian in the world that trusts in Jesus only is taken out of here. And those people, the workers, the ones who think they have to do this, and, think, and I'm better than you, and oh, I've done this, and they, they, do you think God will allow any of them to show up in heaven with any kind of pride, any kind of pride whatsoever when they show up in heaven? I did this. I did, I'm better than that guy over there. You know, I figured this date out. I'm better than the guy who's looking at the moon. No. That is simply not going to happen, which is why you'll never hear me on every single video I make. You won't hear me or see me post anything bad about another channel. There are those who think if you don't search for Jesus the way I do, 
And there, there, this is a little small channel. And I told you a couple of videos ago, I would promote your channel. You believe Jesus Christ is God Almighty, and I respect you for that. But you're spending too much time dogging out the bigger channels. You think that might somehow increase your channel. I'm not sure why you're doing it, just because of what they look at, which is different than you. And I've said it a thousand times on here, people. I see dates. I tore this Bible apart. I've had this Bible since 1980s. I've torn it apart. What I've highlighted in here and searched through in here are dates. God's been on my heart for dates for a long time. That's my thing. That's what I do. That's how God got me. That's how he got me. That's what he did. Some of you see things in the clouds. I look up at the same cloud. I don't see it, but they're like, don't you see the angel? I don't see it, but I'm not going to sit here and say, because I don't see it, it's not real. That's what this other channel is doing. I will promote your channel, and I will have people listen to you. You have a very small following, but all you're doing in every single video that you're doing is dogging out other channels. He's never done it to me yet, so don't think I'm upset, because I'm not. I'm not upset at all. But he does believe Jesus Christ is God. He's like, well, these people that are, you know, hearing, uh, hearing trumpets. You know what? <laughs> Let me tell you, I was asleep one night. I snapped up out of bed, and my wife's like, what? What? Is everything okay? I'm like, did you didn't just hear that trumpet blast? It was loud. How did you not hear that? She's like, there was no blast. I didn't hear anything. I heard it. So you're telling me that that's not real, and that's the problem. Stop looking at other people's gifts. Everyone has gifts. This is mine. Look at your own gift. Pay attention to your own gift. God gave that gift to you. Use it and promote. Build money for God. That's what he said. He gave some money, and you go out and you grow that for the kingdom of God. And that's what, I'm, that's what I feel like I'm doing. I believe I'm doing that, and I'm hoping that I'm getting through to somebody. The dates, for me, numbers, for me, prove God beyond a shadow of a doubt. The way things line up perfectly, just like he said, how did all those dates I just, well, we're going to go here, oh, and then go 40 days, 7 and 7, and then we're going to go 150, and then it, and it lands on Tishri 1. That's God Almighty. There's no question. You can't question that. That's God Almighty. All right. Rant over. I am done venting. Back to here. Stop dogging out other channels. Promote them. All right. So, first month, first day, we know that that is Tishri 1. That is September the 15th. What happens next? What happens next? He goes straight for, oh, by the way, by the way, that's date number 10. Remember 10 is the parentheses around all the previous nine um, things that had to happen. That's 10. All right. It is completed right here. The bride, and, and again, this is just me talking. I'm not saying what must be done, but this is how God uses numbers. Nine means a segment of 10 is done. One segment, one segment. And when it's done, 10 is done. All 10, a parentheses around all 10. Okay. So, number 10. Guess what he goes straight for after number 10? Number 11. And that's why I'm here. On number 11, it says here that first day of the month. Okay, right here. Now, in the second month and the 7th and 20th day, 7th and 20th day, that is 10 days after Noah got onto the ark. He was on the ark for one year and 10 days. Guess how many days it is between Tishri 1, September 15th, and November the 10th, Heshvan 27. He points us out how far apart his Pentecosts are by doing this. No, they don't land on a Pentecost, but he points us out how long it is. It's 57 days. Remember, every Pentecost lands on a Sunday. It always lands on a Sunday. Every Sunday... The Bible clearly says, okay, start your count from the Sabbath after. Don't go back to the Sabbath behind you. That date's already passed. It's done. You are on Sunday. You count from the Sabbath after. How far is Saturday from Sunday? 
it's seven days. And then I want you to count 49 days, seven Sabbaths, 49 days, even unto the morrow. What happens tomorrow? Well, it's Sunday again, and it's Pentecost. How many days are in between? 57. How many days are in between Tishri 1, September 15th, and Heshvan 27? 57. And guess what day it lands on? It lands on 11-11. That's why I'm here. It lands on 11-11, November the 11th. Heshvan 27. Is, it says it on my timeline, November the 10th. That's why I didn't catch it. I didn't catch it because I wrote November the 10th, but it's actually at nightfall. Just like Noah got off, uh, got onto the ark at nightfall, he got off the ark at nightfall. And November the 10th, it's nightfall. It's The next day is 11-11. The next full day he spends in a brand new world with everything wiped clean and being on the ark for a year and 10 days and everything out there is just teeming with life and it's growing and he's released the animals. And of course, uh, if I'm correct, previous to the flood, they were all vegetarians. I don't think they ate meat. I do know that God killed an animal and covered uh, Adam and Eve for their sin. And let me think. Yeah, that's I, I believe I, be, I don't believe they ate animals, but God did kill an animal and covered them, which means they are saved. We will see Adam and Eve in heaven when we get there. They're saved. They had they had a covering made for them well, by Jesus, because Jesus Christ is God Almighty. All right. Whoops. There's Doctor O again. Oh yeah, we're gonna fight. We're gonna fight. I want to show you something to confirm my timeline. And I've said this before, that, and, and few channels have alluded to this. The sun during creation, 6,000 years ago, was in the constellation of uh, Gemini. It was in the constellation of Gemini. Man and God together in the garden. Man sinned. 1,656 years later, 4,344 years ago from right now, um, the flood came. Where was the sun? The sun was in the horns of Taurus. Go ahead and go forward to Abraham. The sun is coming into the very beginning of Aries. Then you come to Jesus. During the entire time Jesus was here, or, or I guess it's going through Taurus for Abraham, but it's it's in the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Remember, you can look it up. You can Google it. We all love Google. Go to Google for all of our dates. I've actually had people say that. Why are you using that date? Google says, I'm like, are you serious right now? Did Google do a Bible search? <laughs> all right, so the sun is right here, right now on March the 17th. That is the head of the year. It never changes. It is always St. Patrick's Day, March the 17th, the green day. It's always there. If you change this, then you change the story. Oh, in the last 2,000 years, the sun's been in Pisces, which is the two, the two rapture fish. One is facing the correct direction and the one's kind of off to the side. Both groups believe, both are Elijah and Elisha, both are going to heaven, but Elisha is going to see Elisha go. And if you see me go, a double portion will be given to you. If you see me go and you know what happened and you don't take that mark and you don't believe in that stuff, you too will be gathered. A, a rapture means taken out of imminent danger. It means that the first seal is open. We cannot be here for that. We will not be here for that. The other group thinks the seals are already open. They think they've already seen the mark of the beast. They think that all of this stuff that's happening is because we're in these seals. I haven't seen a single horse ride out of heaven yet. I don't know how anybody can possibly believe that, but they are a great multitude, a great multitude that no man can count. The sun goes through the two fish. One of them is the bride facing the correct direction. The other one's facing off to the side. It is the saint gathered during the tribulation. How far after the rapture? I don't know, but I'm going to give you, and I'm going to go through the timeline. I'm going to give you this thought to think about. Are we raptured on August 6th in three days? Forty days later to the very day, the day that child comes out of the womb of Virgo, the day that the Revelation 12 sign told us to look at, which honestly is just as 
every bit as the Revelation 12 sign as anything else. And three days later, the moon is at her feet. Exactly three days. Are those three days of darkness? I don't know. I had no idea, but that's 40 days. Exactly. Look what happens on March the 17th. There is a story in heaven. Now, what's the next part of the story during the thousand-year millennium? The sun will be in Aquarius. Go find a man bearing a picture of water, and he will take you to the upper room. Rent the upper room. This is a story of where we will be during this time, during the time the water is pouring over the sun. All right. What happens a thousand years from now, at the end of the millennium? Look, the, the sun has made it through the water. It finished it it's through the water. What if, what if I'm wrong? What if the date really is the equinox? What if it really is the first sliver of the moon after the sun goes? They will never get to my date, ever, because they will not look at the equinox. They will use the first sliver of the moon after September the 20, I'm sorry, March the 21st, when the equinox happens. They are the children of the dark. They are not children of the light. They are so, and I'm not like putting anybody down for that, but they, the closest that they've ever gotten to my timeline is this year. They got to the 23rd, two days after the equinox crossing on the 21st, just two days. They are six days off from mine. Let's see what happens. This is the year 3030. The sun has made it through the water. Here's what happens if you use March the 23rd. The, and let's say it's the earliest one they can possibly use. Remember, they're using it. They have to see the first sliver of the moon after the sun crosses the equinox. They'll never reach my date. The whole story is torn away. It's gone. There is no story. The story has been deleted. The first day of the year is March 17th. This is what happens at the end of the millennium. This, it hasn't even just barely reached the water at the end of the millennium. That story is deleted by using any other date than March the 17th. Let's go ahead and do another month later. Well, look at there. The sun is in the rapture fish. It's not even anywhere near being Aquarius. Go into town, find the man bearing a pig. This is the last one we have. And then it's the end. It's the end of the thousand years. Then this is where I was showing you why you keep seeing 1111, and it's because uh, the flood is over. They've come into a brand new world. Here's my idea. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to float this idea out there. I'm not setting a date. But when all this laid out like it did, I said, the perfect scenario for me is Noah's date number nine, when the dove flies away and it doesn't return. And then 40 days later, Noah removes the covering. Date number 10. It's completed. Everybody that's going to, remember this, everybody that's going to heaven will go to heaven in either a rapture of the bride or a rapture of the saint. That's it. There's no one else going to heaven. Everyone else stays here and goes into the millennium. They step off that boat into a brave new world on what day? 11-11. Somebody been trying to tell us something? I know if you're that one YouTube channel, there's no such thing as uh, God alluding things to us like that. That's just silly. You see what uh, time came up on my phone today, which kind of blew my mind. All right, so why do you keep seeing 1111? Of course, the Google, my favorite place to go for source of dates and information according to you know when the rapture is going to occur, Google's the place to go. Um, they have all kinds of reasons for what 11-11 mean. Most of them are mystic, and they're wrong. All right, let's start here. You can barely see it. Date number one. Now you have your, you have your, uh, I'm going on too long. I was so excited. I just, I just felt like I just had to keep talking about this. Um, you have your scrap paper, and you wrote all those dates down. Found your pen over there on the table paper over there underneath the couch and you wrote all the dates down right if you didn't you have to pause this video and go back and start over again all right because if you did you're going to see how wonderful this plays out right now all righty date whoops i keep doing that that's like the second time first date the arc door is open 
Noah sits at the entrance, and Methuselah, his grandfather, dies. And remember, and this is extra biblical, it doesn't amount to a hill of beans, but five years earlier, his father, is it Jared or Lamech? I haven't got the names mixed up. I think it was Lamech. Jared, Lamech. I think it was Lamech. But five years earlier, his father dies. His grandfather, named Methuselah, dies exactly on this day, on October the 24th, seven days before the flood started. His father, it's got to be Lamech. His father, Lamech, dies five years earlier, probably on this date. And Noah begins to build the ark. Nowhere in the Bible does it say Noah took 120 years to build an ark. I could go outside Right now, if all I had was supplies, me and my three sons and, the, and my wife and, and three daughters, and I could build a mansion in five years. I've, I've been watching this stuff on YouTube where they build log cabins on the woods, and these people are here. It took me three months from start to finish, and I'm like, how in the world? How in the world? But God gave him the knowledge and the plans on how to build this thing, and he just started building. And one board after another, after another, after another, he built this thing. So he built the ark for five years. He warned everybody for 120 years, which, of course, 50 Jubilee, everybody's like, that's how old a generation is, 120 years. No, it's not. It's 50 years per Jubilee times 120, and it's 6,000 years. And guess what? We're going to land on that date. When? We're going to land on it on September the 11th, which is the first day of creation. That's when all of this began. And guess how many years ago it was? 6,000 years. There are two Jubilees running simultaneously, and they are seven years apart. Noah, I'm sorry, Adam was created exactly as of September the 11th, which is not far from now, exactly six thousand years ago adam sinned in this in the eighth year guess what day guess what day adam decided to sin it was the second month and 17th day on halloween adam sinned it was the eighth year the second month and the 17th day on halloween day adam sinned he was kicked out of the garden in the fourth month and it doesn't specify whether it's the first day so i just went to uh to look and it uh, it looks like the date is the last day of Hanukkah and Tevet 1 would be the fourth month and first day for him and that's December the 15th, the last day of Hanukkah, which by the way, Hanukkah never moves. Hanukkah is always started on December the 7th and it always ends on December the 15th. It doesn't change with moons or anything. So, Lamech dies five years earlier. He is a preacher for 120 years. He's warned people. He warns them for 115 years, and then he spends five years building the boat that he warned them about for the past 115 years. And he builds this massive boat. And he sits at the entrance of his boat with the door open. And nobody <laughs> hearing, and I feel the same way. I feel you, Noah. Man, I feel you warned everybody for all of those years 120 years and he's sitting in his ark with the door open and what are they doing at they're laughing at him what are you doing what are you, you took all those animals into the boat what's wrong with you <laughs> are you crazy you know you're just sitting in there does it smell in there? I mean, what, what's going on? You're gonna. What are you gonna do? Even if it does, you're gonna sit in that boat. How how long do you think you're gonna be in the boat? Maybe it's just gonna make a river through here, and you're just gonna float down there, and we'll just meet you down there. The mockers and scoffers were off the chain, going after him. But he believed in God. He believed his only salvation was that ark pitched within and pitched without Jesus Christ. That was his only savior, and that's all he had. He sat in that ark door with the door open for seven days, and nobody, nobody would change their heart and come inside and say, you know what, you might be a crazy old kook, but I like you, and if your message is true, I want to be in here. Do you think Noah would say, get out of here, you didn't say it the right way, you didn't, uh, you didn't feel it the right way? No. The door was open for anybody who wanted to come in. It was a free gift. Come on in. The door's open. It's open for seven days. 
Come on in. I've loaded all the animals. We're ready to go. There's eight of us in here. We could hold two more. We could hold ten more. Come on in. Nope. Nobody. Just like now. Nothing's changed. All right. Let's go back to the pictures. All right. Let's go through these timelines real quick. I explained them mostly, but I want to show it to you on a timeline because it makes the most sense. The arc door is open. Noah sits at the entrance. Methuselah dies. He dies down here on October the 24th, Heshvon 10. Seven days later, which by the way, is 153 days from the resurrection and 150 days away from the cross. I didn't write the 150 down. I should have, but it's 150 days to the cross and 153 days to resurrection from this moment right here. Halloween, Heshvon 17. You go forward. You see it down here between the arc door. You have the seven days. We have two dates. Let's go find the third date. It's down here. Forty days it rained. Day and night. Bottom, the water was coming from the earth. It was coming from the top. It was coming from everywhere. It's just water everywhere. Some say that around our planet we had this really thick cloud cover to stop the sun from coming in. And our oxygen level was twice as high as it is now or a percentage higher. And... That's why they were able to live so long, you know, and then every, and then of course you have the scoffers. Well, what did you do with all the water? Seriously? <laughs> this guy spoke the universe into existence. What do you think he did with the water? Water is made of H2O1, two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. You don't think God could have separated that and just made it go away? Yeah, he's God. He created everything, he made the water go away. We don't need to know where it went. He took it. He, just like he put it, he took it. Spoke the whole universe into creation. How could he do that? <laughs> He's God. That's how he did that. Date number three, the flood ends. After 40 days, Noah is as high up as he's going to get. He is 23 feet above um, Mount Ararat, or seven meters above. The bottom of his boat has got to be 15, 16 feet. So he's literally just feet. I, I, this is so important for you to understand that the boat did not come back down for a mile and sat on a, a mountain. He was up there and he stayed up there. Okay. So we're going to go forward. This is December the 10th, Kiss Love 27. It is right smack in the middle of Hanukkah, the Festival of Lights. Hanukkah begins on December the 7th, Kislev 24, and ends on Tevet 1, December the 15th. That's another timeline that I worked on. And then you have Mary conceiving. I won't go through that because I'll get stuck on that next. All right. We saw date number three. Let's go to date number four up here at the top. Come on. Stop doing it. Okay, there we go. I had to get it that small so you could see at the top. 150 days. The water has begun he's floating around up there he's as high as he's ever going to get 23 feet above mount ararat seven meters he is as high as he's ever going to get and guess what happens on the 150th day the day that jesus goes to the cross trust me when i saw this i saw this last year but i didn't really see it until i just now put all 11 of these dates 11. And I was like, there's no way it comes up to 11. I went back, I read it, scoured over it. There's only 11 dates. There's exactly 11 dates. And it ends on 11-11. On our calendar, on the Gregorian calendar, you don't think God had a hand in our calendar being 75 days to the very day off from the Hebrew calendar? Of course he did. He made all that water disappear. He can fix our calendars. 150 days, the water begins to subside. It continually now from this moment here the waters are receding they are going down they are what is it called ashwag i forget what dr bear says ashwag they are going down they're being abated it only takes three days for the ark to rest on the top of mount ararat again it's not he's not that far above mount ararat he goes up and he stays up there he's up in mount ararat and his ark settles down what seven feet eight feet you know what i'm saying four meters five meters it goes down you know what i'm saying and it lands it, it doesn't go down very far and it lands and you have jesus who defeats death god almighty comes here humbles himself walks in a human body 
is subject to all of our problems and things that we go through. But he sinned not when he was here. Not one sin did he commit when he was here. And then they killed him and he rose. That's time, the date number five that we find in the Noah flood. Let's keep going. What do we read after that? We read that the next date will be the 10th month and the first day. That is down here, Tammuz 1. And when I do the calculation between the date Jesus rises, you can see it right here, 75 days. You know what? How is that possible? You mean to tell me that uh, Abraham was 75 years old when he went into uh, into the, the new land? Do you mean to tell me that this calendar right here, the Enoch timeline, is exactly 75 days off from the Gregorian? You tell me God has a hand in all of this. And what happens at the end of this? The tops of the mountains are seen 75 days after Nisan 17, or as uh, Noah would say, 717. Now, we are exactly 40 days to the 9th of Av. The Bible records that he sees the tops of the mountains. But then, 40 days later, he releases a raven and a dove. Time number 7. That's the 7th date we're given in the Noah flood. He releases a raven and a dove. Remember, and then, oh, and seven days later, he releases a dove. Oh, wait, I missed one. Where did it go? Oh, there it's up there. So here on Tisha B'Av, he releases the raven and the dove. The raven doesn't come back. The raven is never coming back. He releases the uh, dove again seven days later, the Bible says. And he returns with an olive branch. He does this on all 15, which is to be off. And then finally, seven days later, he releases the dove again. And he does not return. Seven days later, from the date he releases the dove, date number nine that we find in the timeline, you go 40 days because it says that um, the next date we're given is the first day of the first month for Noah, Tishri 1. For us, it's the seventh month. For him, it would be the first day. These dates will not work unless you know that there's exactly 182 days in between Nisan 1 and Tishri 1. Exactly. And so, 40 days, 40 days from the day Dove doesn't return, it will land you on, whoops, Rosh Hashanah, Feast of Trumpets. What happens? They've been saying it for so long, I've gotten a headache over it. We're not going until the Feast of Trumpets. We're not going until the last trumpet is blasted. But the problem is that's number 10. That's the completion of everything. Something has to happen before number 10. Noah's New Year, Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah. It was moved back in Exodus 12 to uh, Nisan 1. This is the day that Noah removes the covering. We kind of gloss over that and don't think that really means anything. The covering is removed on that day. I think that's the, the gathering of the saints. Is it going to happen 40 days after the dove doesn't return, the rapture of the bride? Is there something else in here that would indicate that's not in Noah, in the story of Noah, that we might be looking at as a rapture date as opposed to when the dove takes off and doesn't return? Could we look at uh, nine days later, Jesus being baptized on August the 15th? Why, yes, we can. We can look at every day, honestly. At this point, we're about to go. It could happen at any second, but here we go on August the 6th and then and, and August the 15th, and then we have the first day of creation. This is the first day God began creation. Remember, he says, I am the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He began this entire project to the very day, 6,000 years ago on September the 11th, when he created everything, including Adam and Eve. Then seven years later, a full seven years, two months and 17 days later, Adam sinned and a new jubilee started. That jubilee will end in the year 2030. This jubilee here, am I saying jubilee right? Yeah, this jubilee will end now here in 2023. I did not do the annual math on that, but I did recognize 
that the Bible alludes to there being an overlapping, and we see it on the timeline, Every just so many things overlapping. So God is well, he's smarter than us by a lot. So he's running several timelines at the same time. Right now, September the 11th ends 6,000 years from creation. And that's 2023. And then it does it again on September the 11th in 2030. Exactly. So, remember, I know you're like, September 11th, what does it have to do with anything? That's not Feast of Trumpets. It's not. He created time on the fourth day. Call it a Wednesday if you'd like. The calendar is actually correct in 2022. It's not right now. It'll be correct again in 2033. But this year, it's off by a day. So go to 2022 if you want to see what days are actually the days of the things that occurred that are that you can find in the Bible. So, Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, will happen four days after the beginning of creation on September the 11th. All right, let me get back to this. This is exciting stuff. All right, so here we are. I've given you date number 10, Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah. Then God says, from this moment here, imagine he's sitting in the ark, the covering is off, the ark's been resting on top of a mountain for, oof, how long? Like almost a, a year, well, it's been resting on the mountain for almost five months. I wonder if I could do math on that, actually. I bet you that ark's been re- how many days after 50, 57 days? Mmm, 365, 300. I wonder, I bet you I could do math on that and find out that that's five months. Huh. Time will be shortened to five months. I'm going to have to go look at that. That just caught my attention. But from September the 15th, Tishri 1, it is 57 days. 57 days. Remember, you count from the Sabbath after, it's Sunday. You count from the Sabbath after, it's seven days. And then you count seven times seven. And then the next day, and it will be Sunday again. Noah leaves the ark on uh, time number 11 that we find in uh, his story, his account, on Heshvan 27. November again, November 10th. I'm not going to change it because it is November the 10th, but it had to have been at nightfall. Uh, maybe he stayed in there while he rustled all the animals out. And then finally, when sun's going down, it becomes November the 11th. But that is, November the 11th is actually accurate, unless I didn't calculate the day out of time properly. But I think in November the 11th, uh, 10th, 11th is, is accurate to that. But think about that. There are 11 times, 11 dates found in the story of Noah. It lands on 11-11. I've shown you how the Gregorian calendar was touched by God. It is perfect, 75 days wrong from the Hebrew calendar. And when you count your days, the sun goes up, give it a name. Sun comes up again, give it another name. Let's call this one February 1st. Hey, let's call this one February 2nd. I have an idea. We'll call the next one February 3rd. It's the only way it can be done legitimately it's the only way it can be maybe it'll fix after the rapture or after you know during the millennium maybe god will put everything back in alignment the way it's supposed to be but for right now we got to look at the days i saw this today and i was like no stop 10 10 remember on the timeline timeline number 10 is when the saints go now will it be 40 days or however many days. Oh, I was talking about that. Let me go back to that real quick so I don't uh, lose my train of thought on that. I think we go on number nine because it's one part of the salvation plan. All the other stuff had to have, all the other stuff throughout the past 2,000 years since Christ we had to go through, but we've made it to number nine. And in number nine, we go and we don't come back. It's also possible we go when Jesus is baptized. How ironic is it that that dove leaves exactly nine days before Jesus is baptized and a dove sets down out of heaven as the Holy Spirit? He just told us the dove was the Holy Spirit. Did he just tell us when we're going, you know? And when you apply all the dates, that's August 6th, three days from now. I thought maybe three days in advance we'd see something major happening, but I'm going to guess maybe it'll just happen. 
And if it doesn't, we're going to look at the day Jesus was baptized on August the 15th. And then we're going to look at September the 11th, the end from the beginning, the first day of creation, 6,000 years ago from Adam. Not from his sin, from his creation. 6,000 years, you know? And then, I mean, you go past September the 11th, honestly, for me, if you go past September the 11th, you're now eating into, of course, he did kind of because Adam sinned in the eighth year and second month and 17th day. He went into the eighth year by two months and and 17 days. Two months and 17 days. That's 77 days. Okay, so he went into that time. And then we have September the 14th. This is the day God created time. So maybe that's when, you know, the beginning of the end are when he created time. This is when he put the sun, moon, and stars in them. But we didn't know. We God knew. I mean, he's God. But we didn't know. Well, we weren't created yet. We weren't created for another two days after this. But time was created here. And God told us. When God says, hey, it's 24 hours. And he made sure to say that one day, 24 hours. He knew what 24 hours was. He had to. I mean, he's God. He knew when 24 hours was. And then he put the sun, moon, and uh, stars into place on this day. And then two days later, well, the next day, all the animals were created. And then the following day, on the sixth day, man was created. And then on the seventh day, God rested. So on the 14th is when he created time. On the 15th is when he created all the animals on Feast of Trumpets. On the 16th is when he created man. And on September the 17th, Tishri 3 is the day he rested. It would be exactly three days or two days. If you're inclusive, counting one, two, three, it'd be three days or two days um, after Rosh Hashanah, Feast of Trumpets. Is that three days of darkness? And that would be the date that God rested from all his work. Was God telling us all along that this is the day he's going to wrap it all up and he's going to rest on this day and it's done? And then, and then, he's going to start tribulation down here either on October the 31st. Start tribulation October the 31st for seven years and then seven years and 10 or 11 days later, seven years and 11 days later, he is going to. I wrote set one year and 10 days. That's how I missed it because I just did the straight math. I didn't even think about it. It might be nightfall. I should have put 11 there. But seven years and 10 days, 11 days, and we walk or they walk. The, 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 the people that are going to the millennium, they will walk into a brave new world just as um, Noah did. Let's see. Do I have anything else? That's all, folks. All right. That was extensive. A little bit of homework there for you. So go ahead and uh, go through that and do your calculations. The calculations are super simple. Start on March 17th. Why March 17th? Well, first of all, the dates line up. That's number one. Second of all, it is the day of equal parts. It is the day Jesus was talking about when he said, we are not children of the darkness. We don't look at the equinox. We're children of the day. We look at the equal lux, which actually means equal day. And are there not 12 hours in the day? He makes that comment. He alludes to that. And then, and then, on the 16th, March the 16th, he finds out that it, his best friend in the whole wide world has died. Actually, he didn't. They told him because the messengers took two days to get to him that he was sick and Everyone was pressing on him. And finally, he says, look, he died. He, he died. He died while you were on the way here to tell me that he was dying. He actually died. Why did Jesus know that? He's God. That's how he knew that. So, he sits still. And they even ask him, what's going on, man? Your best friend died. Why aren't we moving? He's not moving because he knows it's Rosh Hashanah, Feast of Trumpets. He knows that in Exodus 12, the head of the year was moved back six months. He knows it is Nisan 1. It is March the 17th, and he doesn't budge for two days. On March the 19th and 20th, he arrives. After walking two days, just like it took two days for the messengers to get to him, he walks back for two days, and he resurrects Lazarus. Do you think Lazarus was like, yo, it's been four days. Why didn't you get here in two? He was like, You're only two days away. What happened? He's like, well, you know... Let me tell you about Feast of Trumpets. You can't walk on Feast of Trumpets. You can't move. 
none of the Pharisees, as brilliant as they were, couldn't even see who Jesus was, that they completely missed that boat, and they also missed the commandment of God to move the head of the year back six months. So there's too much evidence in what Jesus said when regarding Lazarus, and I think that entire occurrence took place for us to know. And I'm not the one who found March 17th, by the way. I'm not the one at all. I began looking for this, oh, it's been three, four years ago, and I studied, and I looked, and I searched Google. That's where you find everything. And I kept trying to figure it out, and I kept looking at the sun, going day by day by day, and showing me, but then I learned about the procession of the sun. You can't you can't even use the sun as to when it happens because the sun moves. You can't use the moon because it doesn't line up with any Sabbath of, of 7, 7, 7, 7, 28 days. It's 29 and a half. It doesn't line up with any month. You know of any months that are 29 and then 30 and then 29 and 3? Because if you, if you did, our year would be 354 days long. And it's not. It's 364. So I keep pressing that issue because what's happening is, and on all of these feast days that they found, I didn't find any of that stuff. I I, I didn't find any of that. I just I did this search right here on on Noah, but these other people or maybe this this annual thing, the year thing. I didn't find that. They did, and I just applied it and, and understood it. And so, take what you take from every watcher. Don't watch anyone who doesn't know that Jesus Christ is God Almighty, came in the flesh, because that's the basis. That's the cornerstone. That's the cornerstone of the building. That's what he was talking about. Peter is Pedra in Greek. Jesus is Pedro. Peter is small rock. Jesus is the big rock. We will build our foundation on the big rock, on Jesus. And we will, once we figure out where to start building, and Jesus started it all with that conversation, then we'll go on through the year. So, if there is a YouTube channel spending and wasting time, they, he literally was on it going, I probably shouldn't even waste any time on it myself. It just really annoyed me. I watched it literally on my way home from work. And he's like, yeah, this uh, this guy spends too much time looking at this and looking at that. I'm like, you're spending time right now talking about the guy spending time. I'm, I'm like, stop, stop. <laughs> just love Jesus. And do research. I've given you a little bit of stuff. Go in and see if I'm right, if you find anything different. But isn't that amazing how 11, 11, 11, Jesus was, went to the cross on 3, 30, 30. When you use this timeline, he went to the cross on 3, 30, 30 AD at 3 p.m. And he was 33. He rose on 4, 3, 30 a, uh, uh, A.D. Did I say A.M. before? I might have said it. A.D. And uh, I'll do that too. I, last video I said the moon circled the earth in 19 and a half days. I was listening to it. I'm like, really? I didn't even catch it. 29 and a half days. And uh, so he was born on September the 3rd. I'm sorry. September the 29th in 3 B.C. And he was 33 years old when he went to the cross. All these threes. And honestly, most babies are born at night. It says September the 29th, but it might be nightfall. It might have become September the 30th. So we would have, what's September 7? September, no, it's 9. 933 BC. And uh, who knows what time, sometime at night that night. But anyway, there's just so much proof as we go through this and it's awesome to be able to work with so many other wonderful uh youtube uh researchers and stuff they're just i could name a hundred of them they're just fantastic in the research they do and uh this one guy just annoyed me stop doing that you're literally telling somebody not to waste their time researching stuff and, and playing around with stuff and doing silly stuff you should be just teaching the word of god and then you're literally wasting time talking about a guy that does all those things that you don't want anybody to do. It's, it's beyond me. It's beyond me. All right. So like, comment, share, and subscribe. Because again, what if this video... Okay, check this out. This is huge. Take those things off. I look like I'm old. There, I look 20 again. And all my hair's back. I can't see without my glasses. So <laughs> um, what if... And, I'm not, and I don't think I'm a hill of beans, honestly. I really don't. 
there's no pride in me whatsoever. All this stuff just falls on me, I believe, from the Holy Spirit. And this is my little part, the timeline. I didn't find any of these uh, wonderful events that other YouTube channels have found, but I applied them here and the, the year-long thing and everything. But what if the rapture, in fact, does happen in three days or on September or on August the 15th or September the 11th or September the 14th or September the 15th? Who knows when? In my mind, in my mind, it's got to happen before September the 15th because... That is the day Noah removed the covering. But anyway, what if the rapture does occur and there is a power outage or whatever and people running around trying to explain what happened? What if they run to these YouTube channels like these just awesome YouTube channels that I'm talking about? They're just everywhere. And you had a chance. And I'm not asking anybody to subscribe to me. It doesn't do anything for me. I don't get paid. I don't, this is, and honestly, with as many subscribers as I'm getting, I'm a one-man show. It's a lot of work. Anytime I answer you, it's because I just answered 500 other people. And sometimes it's like, amen. And I just have to go through them until, and then every now and again, I find this brilliant piece of writing. And I'm just like, wow, that's incredible. You know, this is a good find. You did good. Go out and tell someone. But what if, what if, what if this, makes it through and all these other wonderful people make it through just by virtue of of uh of uh, subscribing to these channels i've never asked you for a dime so it's not that's not why it doesn't do me any good it's a lot of work i, I don't just want to go home i don't want to do this work anymore but what if they find it after the rapture and they go well look at this this is crazy this other guy found all this stuff. This other guy found the 6,000 years. This other guy found this. This person had this. Oh, and then there's this one crazy guy that found this timeline. And it says here that he leaves on August 6th. And remember that crazy event that happened on August 6th? When is my time? When is the gathering? The, bri the, 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 uh, the gathering, the, how you call it? The saints need to know this. 40 days is looking, I've been saying, I know, I don't think it's going to be very long. God diverts his attention back to Israel. What part of this gathering of all these, how long do you think it's going to take when the rapture occurs and you've told somebody? I don't care who you told. Tell everybody. If you see me go, when you do go, they're going to know what happened. And they're going to drop to their knees. How long do you think that process will take? 40 days? Or do you think over the course of 40 days, people will choose? Just like when Moses came down out of the mountain. He said, choose now. Choose who you will follow right now. Do you suppose that event will take 40 days? And then the gathering of the saints will occur. This great multitude that no man can count. Do you think the six seals are opened up? within those 40 days. And then the seventh seal, of course, holds the seven trumpets. But the first six seals, on the sixth seal, John says, the angel says to John, who are all these people? Where'd they come from? And he's like, I don't know. I'm like new here. I don't even have a body. I'm in spirit. They got bodies. They've all appeared to have washed their robes white. And the angel's like, yes, these are those that washed their robes white. They came out of great tribulation. And now that they're here, we're going to open up the seventh seal, revealing the seven trumpets, and now the rest of the world who made their choice, they get to go through seven years of tribulation. Choose you today whom you will serve. All right. I've talked. I hope, that, I hope this thing's not that long. I hate making like super long videos, but then I really just feel like i got to get this out there. And so let's hope and pray that if, in fact, I, I don't want to be right. I just... I just want to be. <laughs> I just want. To, I just want to go home, and that's three days. I want to go now, but I just want to be in the ballpark. And I want that if somebody says, "Well, he has this rapture event happening here on August sixth, but it actually happened on August the fifteenth, so everything's delayed seven days for us." So if he said that our day is on September the fifteenth, maybe it's on. Well, that's weird. That also lines up. How does that line up? Lines up with the Yom Kippur seven days later. Does this one line up too? My goodness. Hmm. Did you know that from the dove 
to Rosh Hashanah, it's 40 days. But then from, oh no, wait a minute. Huh, it's 50 days. There's something to that. There's something to the three doves being released. Anybody want to look into this? I'm going to go study this right now, actually. There's something to the fact that the three doves were released seven days apart. Well, two sevens, but now seven days and seven days. You got two sevens in there. 21 days inclusive. Yeah, 21 days. And that's important, too, because that's the day that Michael was held up, or Michael came to help an angel that was held up. That's how my brain works. Okay, so we have another 7-7-7. Seven, seven, and seven. We have September the 15th, which is Feast of Trumpets. No, what it does is it actually starts from the day God rested. September the 17th, you go 7, God rested on the 17th. September the 17th, on Tishri 3. And you go another seven days, and it's September the 24th. Yom Kippur, and then you go another seven days. Is that right? Twenty-four to twenty-nine. Yeah, that's, that's. I guess it's five days. It's five days, and then you land on Tabernacles, Sukkot, the day Jesus was born. But anyway, more stuff to to study. I love numbers, and I love uh, uh, date associations, and that's what I do. I literally take a picture of this, like you see, and I sit on the couch next to my wife, and she's watching TV or studying stuff about gardening, so that she can put my old butt to work for no reason honestly it's really for no reason i keep telling her i'm like why why are we putting a garden out we're not going to be here she's like it's for them how do i argue with that so i got to get up and go outside and work i'm like I'm, but i'm sick i'm passing a kidney so and she's like get up but she did make me go to the doctor so anyway repo man 64 i did the like comment share and subscribe why subscribe subscribe to them all Go to all of them. Anyone who professed Jesus Christ is God Almighty and he's the only way to heaven. And he has a free gift for you. And if you'll just receive it, just receive it. You're going to heaven. Um, and just subscribe to all of them. I'd love to see Glass Darkly Ministries or uh, Looking Up. or I, I mean, I could name a thousand of, of you know, uh, Got a Minute. A a Aaron, everybody knows Aaron over at Got a Minute. I would love nothing more, uh, Wayne over at uh, We Are the Over. I'd love nothing more than to one of them to get a million, million subscribers. One million is a drop in the bucket compared to eight billion on this planet. It's a very small number. My reach is limited with 15. Is it almost, is it 15 or 16? I don't know. I have to look again. Almost 16,000 subscribers. It's very limited, my reach. Um, but your reach is actually further than mine because I talk to you and you go talk to 10 people and they'll talk to 10 people. And that's how the Bible was originally designed. I talk to you, you go talk to them, you get to talk to them and you go talk to them and, 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 the money grows on its own, the salvation or whatever you want to call it. That's why God used the, the term money when he, the rich man gave money and he went out of town. He came back, you know, three different people, two earned and one of them just buried the money because he was afraid, you know. So anyway, um, subscribe to them because this might be the only thing that helps a saint. And when he gets to heaven, he won't come up to me and hug me for what I wrote come up to you and hug you because you subscribed and he happened upon your channel or you shared it or you know whatever whatever happened you know uh maybe this subscription to glass darkly ministries goes up and uh it's just the right number the right algorithm so when they go searching what's going on what happened where's everybody at and it just stops right there and she says this is what happened oh i Jesus, please save me. I didn't know. I, I heard, but I thought they were I didn't I thought they were crazy. Now's the time. So go to a quiet place. I almost forgot that one. Go to an ark with its covering, the windows closed, nobody around. Just an ark full of animals. And ask Jesus to come into your heart, go into your prayer closet, just like it says in Matthew six, five and six. And uh Pray, accept the Lord in your heart, and watch the change. And then go tell everybody, because you've got to multiply. You've got to multiply. All right. 
That's it, I think. Oh, I got the glasses back on. How does that keep happening? I can't see. All right, we'll chat with you again later. Maybe not, I hope.